The latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys for being here each and every single week. Our email address, feedback at ami.ca. Feel free to use that absolutely anytime, whether that's feedback, comments, or even ideas for future shows. We welcome that. On Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada, and use the hashtag AskDoubleTap, and we'll get to your questions. I am Marco Flalo, always by my side is Steven Scott. And Steven, this week, we're diving into hardware, lots of hardware, different kinds of hardware as well. Yes, not? yes, indeed, Mark. This week, we're going to put the new Mac Mini with the hot new M1 chip to the test. To be honest, Mark, I think this is probably the hardest test it's ever faced against any of the other ones I've seen online. I've seen lots of people putting it up against all kinds of kit. Uh, you're not putting it up against some high-end, topped-out MacBook Pro 16-inch, are you? No, oh, come on. Why would I do that? That's such an easy test. Clearly, we've seen uh, the Mac Mini annihilate most of those high-end Mac Pros. No, no, this week we're going to put this up against my uh, Mac Pro, which uh, has a 16-core processor, 192 gigs of RAM, uh, wow. and it's got that afterburner card for accelerated graphics. It's got a dedicated GPU. I I'm going to be honest with you, Stephen. Uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure it's going to come out the winner, but... If it does, oh, okay. if it does, if the Mac Mini actually does beat up this Mac Pro, uh, I'm done. I'm out. I, I give up <laughs> entirely. <laughs> You're out. Yeah, I'll be honest. I, I would struggle with that in use as well, to be honest. Um, I am really looking forward to this test, but for your sake, I'm also hoping the Mac Pro wins out. I'm on your side on this one, Mark. Um, now, look, I've also been buying, this may not surprise you, um, have you ever wanted to spend 700 bucks on a pair of headphones, Mark? Um have ever wanted to spend seven hundred dollars on a pair of headphones? I don't think I've wanted to, um, but I think I have an idea of what you're talking about, and uh, I think I've bought them too. Ah, okay. Well, I am, of course, talking about the new AirPods Max, the weirdest named headphones from Apple. Um, I cannot wait to tell you all about these and give you my uh, first thoughts on these uh, ridiculously expensive headphones. What was your first impression, Stephen, when those were announced? Because no one expected it. It was a surprise announcement, the last announcement of 2020. And uh, mm. I mean, everybody was kind of caught by surprise. I think, you know, some of the leakers were expecting air tags, but instead got uh, AirPods Max. I was I was completely shocked by many many elements of this, let alone the announcement alone. Yeah, I, I kind of I kind of believed that something would come out. I didn't think they'd be called AirPods Max. I thought they might be called AirPods Studio for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but there was also talk of actual AirPods, you know, the little in-ear ones coming out. Maybe some kind of update to those. Uh, but it, it did seem a bit strange that they would just drop a new product like this, something brand new, uh, without any kind of fanfare at all, just, just drop it out into the market. Maybe they don't see it as an area that they want to particularly promote too much at the moment until they see what people actually think of it. Maybe next time around we'll get more of a fanfare. Then again, of course, we probably have to be realistic and say it's probably because they have major manufacturing issues at the moment and they couldn't just put all these products into one event, hence why they've been drip feeding these announcements over the year. It's been a pretty exciting year for yeah, Apple fanboys. Apple's been quoted made. as saying these headphones have been in, in the making for four years. Lots of learning, you can tell because of the design of them, but which you'll get into, of course. I want to put you on the spot, though, because on, an, on a recent edition of Double Tap Canada on AMI-audio every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern, shameless plug, um, Sean, Sean Priest uh, asked this question, and I don't have the answer to it yet. I don't think you have the answer either, but I'm going to put you on the spot here. And that is, who are these for? Mm. Where do these fit? Like these just, they, they don't make sense. They kind of stick out like a sore thumb in the Apple product catalog. And that price tag really does almost price it even out of my range. So who are these for? Um, I'm trying to think of the right word here, the appropriate word to use. I'm thinking posers. Uh, people who just want... <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, right? Remember when the original uh, earbuds came out from Apple? Remember when they, they started to come out with the iPods and you had those white uh, wires that trailed from everyone's ears and everyone just wanted those and you knew... It was such a fashion statement. You knew that you were an Apple person. You had these high-end uh, iPods and you had the high-end earbuds 
buds and all the rest when you got that uh, you, you know you were showing it off essentially I think there's a bit of that going on um, I, I, I think if I'm honest I think this is a bit of a mistake the pricing anyway is I think a bit of a mistake when I think about the HomePod Mini that was released you know that was coming in at around 100 and odd dollars I mean 119 dollars I think it was uh, you know that's that's very low end compared to something like this which seems very high end and I I don't understand why they've decided to price it at this level. I think, if I'm honest, the guys at Bose and the guys at Sony are laughing their heads off at the moment. You know, I've got a drawer full of headphones that I spend my hard-earned money on buying, and I've got my favorites. I know you guys at home have your favorites. Steven, I know those Bose are your favorites. Um, and, and all of these headphones ring in at at least $200 less than these these AirPods Max. So I'm curious to see what your thoughts are when you get them on your head. So let's take a quick break. It is Double Tap TV. He is Stephen Scott. I am Marco Flalo, and we will be back after this quick break. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here. As always, our email address right there at the bottom of the screen, feedback at ami.ca. On Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada. And we've got a great hashtag set up for you guys, which is Ask Double Tap. If you use that, it'll help us get to your questions a lot sooner. I am Marco Flalo. Alongside me, Stephen Scott. Stephen, uh, for those uh, in the audience at home may not realize, but I'm in a new position right now. I'm sitting where you guys, this position is right in front of my desk, where you guys at home normally see this kind of blurred out in the background of, of my set, so to speak. And the reason is, is because we're going to go hands on with my computer. And this is the position in which we are going to put that new M1 Mac Mini up against my Mac Pro. Wow, this is this is what I've been waiting for, Mark. I will be honest, I didn't notice you changing positions. You sound different. There, does that work? Um, but yeah, I'm intrigued to see how you got on with this because this is the test that I think really needs to be done. Now, you may have seen the episode last year where we talked about my reasoning for buying this $18,000 Mac Pro. Obviously, for video editing and all the assembly that we do, it makes sense to do things on a computer that obviously has the power for it, right? Exactly. So now, fast forward a couple of months, we've got this new Mac Mini with Apple Silicon, which everybody's talking about and saying how it blows away, you know, 2019 MacBook Pros with the 16-inch display that I happen to have in the background here. But no one's really put this to the test against the Mac Pro in a real, real-world editing fashion. So we're going to switch angles over here, and I'm going to talk to this camera for a second, because what I have in front of me now, and you're going to see my screen at the same time, is a project where I'm doing a review of the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the iPhone 12 Mini. Now, this is a very good real world example of this Mac Mini. Now, the Mac Mini I have here, as we talked about already, has 16 gigs of RAM. It's got a one terabyte hard drive, so you've got that storage there. But other than that, it's pretty much bare bones. There's nothing else that you can even get on the Mac Mini. Whereas on the Mac Pro, I've got 192 gigs of RAM. I've got an 18 core processor. I've got a discrete graphics card, which, mean, which means it's its own graphics card, a separate graphics card with the afterburner card, which is supposed to enhance graphics as well well on the Mac Pro. Now we've got the same project, we've got a couple color enhancements to make sure the processor is really working. And what we're going to do at the exact same time, because I've got both screens here in front of me, and I'm recording both screens here, is I'm going to take the project, I'm going to hit File, and I'm going to hit Export. Um, when I actually get that, here we go. So I'm going to hit Export which means we're going to actually render this media. And I'm going to do the same thing on both computers here at the same time. And we're going to put them to the test and we're going to hit a stopwatch and we're going to see, okay, how long does it actually take on either device? Now, I'm hoping that it's going to take um, a hell of a lot quicker on the actual Mac Pro, but we'll see that in a second. So I hit media export on both devices. I'm going to switch it to H.264, which is the kind of standard for web streaming. We're going to choose a 4K export. So we're going to go Vimeo 4K Ultra HD. I'm going to do the same thing on the other computer. So we're going to choose H.264 as the encoding. And we're going to choose Vimeo 
4K Ultra HD, and at the same time, I'm gonna hit export on both computers, and we're gonna watch this and see how long it takes. Now, I'll probably speed this up for the sake of the TV show and timing, but we'll talk about this after when I go one, two, three, export. So I'm watching both computer screens here, and I'm gonna to try to walk you through it. The Mac Pro, which is of course the, the heavier duty machine, says it's gonna take 13 minutes and 55 seconds. Now, I do have a stopwatch going here, so you can see the stopwatch is counting. Um, so we'll see a real world time, whereas the Mac Mini says 30 minutes and 48 seconds, and that's actually rising. So the Mac Pro, 14 minutes, 19 seconds now, and the Mac Mini, 29 minutes, 43 seconds. Now, people have put this computer to the test, Stephen, and you've seen some of those benchmarks, and nobody, Nobody is saying that the Mac Mini has lost. So I think we're gonna see that this might be the first case, guys, where the Mac Pro actually surpasses the Mac Mini. And I'm not surprised, guys, based on the specs, it's normal that the Mac Pro would obviously outperform the Mac Mini, but it's a fun real world test. Now the other thing of note here is because I'm using Premiere Pro, which is an Adobe product, not an Apple product, this is not even designed for the Apple Silicon, which means it's running in an emulation mode that's actually translating it, and that's called Rosetta on the new uh, Mac Mini uh, with Apple Silicon, and of course, in the new operating system, Big Sur. I, of course, did not mention earlier, but I mentioned it now, these are both running the exact same operating system, the exact same version of Premiere Pro. So we're really comparing apples to apples here and not apples to oranges, which is of course the saying that everybody uses. So let's take a look back at the screen here. The Mac Pro is at about 12 minutes and 59 seconds remaining, whereas the Mac Mini says 31 minutes. So uh, let's uh, keep the stopwatch going and we're gonna take a look at this and we're gonna speed it up and hopefully see what's going on here. So Steven, as we fast forward time visually, I figure you and I can have a good little catch up moment here to, to realize that it's kind of clear at this point that my Mac Pro is going to beat the M1 Mac yeah. Mini. I must admit that I'm not terribly surprised, but I'm also kind of relieved at the same I, time. I'm not, I was actually quite disappointed. I, I honestly thought we were gonna be uh, getting the news today that your Mac Pro is just basically only useful for for the bin, quite frankly. Um, you know, I thought you would be saying, you know, <laughs> you'd like that, that wouldn't you? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Do the job fine, but okay, fair enough. Your Mac Pro is great. So we're six minutes and 18 seconds into this render. The Mac Pro says there's about eight minutes and one second, eight minutes exactly remaining as of this second, whereas the Mac Mini is saying 22 minutes and 30 seconds. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna continue the fast forward on the visual side, but I'll walk you through what's going on at the same time here. Now we said we're, we're comparing apples to apples here because we've got the same operating system, we've got the same version of Premiere. However, the hardware specs are obviously very different on the Mac Mini versus the Mac Pro. The Mac Pro is an Intel processor, which means that the Premiere Pro version actually is optimized to work on that machine. Plus with dedicated graphics, it should be faster and that afterburner card in the Mac Pro should make it faster as well. So while visually time is going by, we're fast forwarding through that, I'm kind of explaining what's going on here in terms of the background. At the end of this process, we should have two beautiful 4K videos, nice reviews that I'll post on YouTube later. but. I'm very curious to see at the end of the day which one comes out first. At this point, it's looking like the Mac Pro is definitely coming out ahead of the Mac Mini. So we're, we'll continue the fast forward here a bit. We'll throw some music in to entertain you for a couple seconds. But uh, in a moment, I'll come back as we hit the final stretch of this render between the Mac Mini, M1 Mac Mini with Apple Silicon versus the Mac Pro with the Intel processor. So Steven, you can see here, you know, about a halfway through, clearly the Mac Pro is definitely ahead. You thought, I, I know, in your heart, in deep down inside, you're like, well, watch this, Mark. Wouldn't that be cool if the Mac Mini sped ahead suddenly for some random reason? I know that that's what you were thinking. That's what I was here. hoping for. Uh, and I kind of thought it might. I thought maybe it'll just be building itself up, you know, limber, because that's the feeling I get with the Mac Mini, is it's just sort of, you know, stretching out its hands, you know, it's just kind of cracking its <laughs> knuckles and saying, right, okay, let's get to the job. A bit like, you know, when I wake up in the morning and I haven't had a coffee yet. But once I've had that coffee, we're off. Uh, it didn't happen though, did it? No, no, it didn't happen. I guess what, we're looking back at the screen here and I think we're almost about at the minute mark left. 
and 54 seconds while we still have 14, almost 15 minutes remaining on the Mac Mini. You can see this has taken 1348 so far on the, uh, on the Mac Pro. It'll be about 15 minutes on the Mac Pro versus 30 minutes on the Mac Mini. So half the time to render the exact same video on these two devices. Now, of course, you know, Mac Pro versus Mac Mini, I've said this many times, this is not apples to apples. Yes, the project is the same, but definitely way more horsepower on this Mac Pro. However, you know, those people who are out there who are doing these reviews and comparisons to the 16 inch MacBook Pro that has a Intel Core i9 processor and the Mac Mini is killing it and the Apple M1 Silicon is killing it, you know, kudos to them. But definitely if you're on a higher end scale here and you're working with, you know, lots of video files, then this is definitely not going to be apples to apples. We got three seconds left, two seconds left, one second, and there we go. We are done after 14 minutes and 40 seconds on the Mac Pro, and we still got 13 minutes and 56 seconds remaining on the Mac Mini. So obviously, Stephen, there clearly uh, no challenge there, but the interesting test is going to be when we start putting software that's a little bit more equal, I mean, a little bit more on equal footing between these two, because Premiere Pro is not yet optimized for the Apple Apple's own processors there, whereas on the Intel, obviously it is definitely there. I still think the Mac Pro is going to come out ahead because we've got that dedicated graphics card and that afterburner card and all that memory, but we have yet to see what's really going to happen when we put apples to apples. Yeah, exactly. Although, in saying that, I wouldn't be too harsh on the little Mac Mini there because, you know, if you put that up against my 15-inch MacBook Pro, which has got 32 gig of RAM, dedicated graphics, you know, an i9 processor going at full pelt, you know, it, it's the Mac Mini is still beating it. Um, so, you know, that, that says a lot about these processors, a lot about the capability here. And we're only still remind, you know, we've got to remind people we're at day one. This is only going to get better. And it's already at an amazing place. There's still plenty show to come. We've got more Apple product on the way with the AirPods Max after we take a quick break here on Double Tap TV. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI-audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys again for being here. If you've got some feedback, I know some people at home are asking me a lot of questions about things I can do with that new Mac Pro versus the Mac Mini or the new Mac Mini versus the Mac Pro. Uh, let us know. Email address feedback at ami.ca and on Twitter it is at Double Tap Canada and use that hashtag which is Ask Double Tap. I am Mark Aflalo, always by my side, Stephen Scott. Stephen, you're wearing those shiny new Apple AirPods Max. Wow, those definitely look a little bit more than I expected. St Steven? Steve? He can't hear me. He has his noise cancellation on. This is great. Steven, I'm waving at you. Steven! Oh, sorry. You're talking to me, aren't you, Mark? Yeah, sorry. I was listening to some Adele there on these beautiful, brand new AirPods Max headphones from... Apple. I am so excited, Mark. These are the most expensive headphones I've ever worn in my life. Uh, and the question everybody's going to be asking me and have already started asking me since I announced I was getting these is, what do they sound like? Are they any good? Are they terrible? Please tell me they're terrible because then I won't want one. Um, no, I think guys, you're going to want these because they are pretty decent. Uh, look, headphones, the sound of headphones, the quality of music and audio you get from them, it really is down to the individual. It's very hard for me to sit here and tell you all the reasons why I would, would buy them. There are some specific reasons though, and some really interesting top tips I wanna give you today that you may not realize about these. Uh, look, first of all, to the design. As everyone who has told you anything about these already, whether you've watched the Apple videos, whether you've watched reviews already, will tell you that they are solid. These are absolutely solid. The aluminum on the outer case is just beautiful. It is solid. I've got it in the space gray. Um, you know, the ear cups, what I love about these is the fact they just pop out, you know, really simple. They just pop out and then pop back in again, magnetized. They don't fall out. They never have. Uh, you think they might, but they wouldn't. The headband's a bit weird, the way that it's designed with this kind of very flimsy feel to it. In some ways, I kind of worry about that long term. And of course, let's not even talk about the bra or headphone case, as they call it. Smart case, although I think the theory on that has been debunked that it's actually terrible. Uh, it means really no difference to anything whatsoever. Um, you know, once you take these off, they go into sleep mode, all right? Let's just get over that. Um, 
But look, there are some really cool things about this. A couple of things important to note about these uh, when you're wearing them, and this is to the blind folks out there, because there's no evidence or anything I can find that tells me this on the headphones. There's certainly no markings here um, that I'm aware of. You have to have the buttons that you'll feel on the top of the right hand side. Those buttons have to be on the right ear, just so you know. Uh, so once you put them on, you've got those buttons on the, the front and on the back. There's one on the front, which is your transparency button. It's kind of a long button there. Uh, that one will turn on transparency mode and turn it off. You can adjust that in settings, like many things you can expect. Behind that, you've then got the digital crown. A weird position, you might think. Uh, you, you spin the crown to adjust volume if you feel it's too quiet or lower the volume. You can also press the button once, the digital crown once, and that will let you play. Uh, press again to pause. Uh, you can then, of course, double press to uh, advance a track in your playlist, triple tap to go back a track. So, you know, really nice functions there. But, you know, something else people might not realize, and again, it comes to the sound quality of these. If you're not entirely sure about the sound quality, there is something cool you can do in your smartphone. So let me get my phone up here. Uh, if I go into my uh, accessibility settings, I want to show you this. If I go into accessibility and then I go to AirPods, there's actually a setting in here for the AirPods, in fact, there's a few settings. Now there's the standard settings that kick off, things like, for example, changing the speed that you press the buttons. That's a very important feature for those who might have issues when it comes to uh, motion, motor uh, dexterity, things like that. Uh, so you can adjust the, uh, the speed that you press the button so that it will actually respond appropriately. You can have noise cancellation with one AirPod as well, or one headphone on. And then there's uh, audio accessibility settings. If you go in there, there's headphone accommodations. And what's interesting about this is it allows you to customize the audio. Now, why this isn't in the general Air AirPod settings is kind of beyond me, but this is really for everybody to be aware of because if you want your vocal range that bit brighter or you just feel that you want a bit more general brightness in your sound or more balanced tone, you can get all of that by going into the settings here. And then you can adjust how much or how little of that you actually want. You can then adjust how you want the uh, the phone to behave or the headphones to behave when you're wearing them, including, for example, where you want spatial sound to come from. Might be from an iPad, might be from a phone. You can choose that option. Don't get me started on spatial sound. It is amazing. It is brilliant. I don't have to, all the time to get into it. I will say this though, Mark, you know, for the money these have cost, the question ultimately is, are they worth the money? Would you, should you get yourself a pair of AirPods Max? My answer is, if you have the money and you can get it, do it. Either way, Stephen, uh, those are headphones that I'm sure some people are going to put on their shopping list. You know, it's funny because when I look at the price tag, uh, in US dollars, it seems a little bit more realistic, whereas when you convert that to Canadian dollars, $779 Canadian, it's it's totally out of the out of the ballgame when it comes to pricing. Anyhow, you guys tell us what you think. Feedback at AMI.ca is our email address on Twitter. Reach out to us. It's at Double Tap Canada with a hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. On behalf of Stephen Scott, I am Marco Flalo. Thank you guys for being here on another edition of Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. Hosted by Marco Flalo and Stephen Scott. Editing Will Latar. Production assistants Wendy Kaufman. Content review Zachary Flalo. Social media Andy Wynn. Segment producer Sean Priest. Voiceover Anna Vicino. Integrated described video specialist Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer Jennifer Johnson. Director production Kara Nye. Director programming Brian Perdue. VP content development and programming John Melville. President and CEO David Arrington. Copyright 2021 Accessible Media Inc.